Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 76. This is Zacharias. His mouth has been opened after at least nine months, not a little longer, because he didn't believe the angel. He opens up his mouth and praises God and prophesies. He's a Levite. He's a prophet. In verse 76, and thou child, talking about his son John, shall be called the prophet of the highest. Capital H. So John the Baptist is a prophet. For thou, John, shall go before the face of the Lord, that's Jesus, to prepare his way. John the Baptist is a prophet from the Lord God. Isaiah 40, verse 3. Isaiah 40, verse 3. Learn a little bit about John. Isaiah breaks. At chapter 39, by chance. And begins anew in chapter 40. Now, 66 books in your Bible. 66 books, uh, chapters in Isaiah. Chapter 59 matches, or, book of Malachi. Malachi is the 59th, 39th book in the Bible. Matthew, beginning the New Testament, is the 40th book of the Bible. So, 40, chapter 40, Verse 3, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, Zacharias said, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That's what Zacharias just said, and this is going to be called to remembrance again later on in our study. John is a prophet. He's a preparer for the Lord. Malachi 3.1 Malachi 3.1 Last book of the Old Testament before Matthew. Malachi 3.1 Talk about John the Baptist. Malachi 3.1 The last book of the Old Testament the King James Bible. Now if that's not an inspiration of God watch this 3.1 Behold I, God, will send my God messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, ooh, ooh, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Zacharias has now got the inspiration of Scripture about his boy. No ordinary boy here. 1 Corinthians 11, 3. 1 you know, Jesus said, of all the children that are born, there is none greater than John the Baptist. First Corinthians eleven three. You know he did what Nathan did. He walked right up to the king. He said, "You're a sinner." And, you know. You know. I just realized about that. They're both adultery. Adultery with Bathsheba, who was Uriah's husband, and 
in adultery with his brother's Philip's wife or something like that. That's interesting. David spared Nathan and got right with the Lord. Uh, Herod put John in prison because of her or whatever her name is. Verse 3. 1 Corinthians 11, 3. And I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of well, maybe Second Corinthians. I didn't put a, that was good to read. Typo error. Seven three. It's right here. No. I guess that's a that's a bad one there. Let me cross that off. All right. We read some extra Bible today. Matthew eleven nine. Let's try that one. Sometimes error does happen, I mean, man. If that was to be something, I don't got the thought of that. Ma uh, Matthew 11, verse 9. And he's talking about John the Baptist. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, even more than a prophet. Zechariah says his son's a prophet. Jesus says he's more than a prophet. You can write you can write John the Baptist down with the prophets. And he dies really for the word of God. It, it's extended. He's beheaded by what he told the king about what the Bible says about adultery. A little belly dance, but still. Mark 1 3. Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 3. What is John? The voice. There's a bunch of idiot women on television sitting around the table don't do nothing for them calling themselves the voice. You have taken John the Baptist's title. You wicked women. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize. There's John the Baptist. He's a prophet. He's a voice. He is the preparer of the way. He's going to get Israel ready for Jesus. He begins his ministry before Jesus does. He is born before Jesus. Back to 176, Luke 176. When you read about, you know, it's just John the Baptist. Boop you do. No. Man, you got to look at this guy's life. He, he, of all the men in the Bible, John. He was supposed to be Elijah had Israel got right. How would that have happened? We don't know. We can't talk about it because it never did happen. What, I'm going to just expose here just to let you know. John, and this is not true, but John's walking around with, Hello, my name is John. Okay, John the Baptist. Had Israel got right, one day that, hello, my name is John the Baptist, would be, hello, my name is Elijah. What? I just thought they said John the Baptist. Was... Then up, up popped Moses. Like Moses and Elijah up, popped up with Jesus one day. 
And then they'd be having fun with all kinds of plagues and not having it rain for a while. Revelation. But that never happened. He was killed. Why was John the Baptist killed? Because he told the king off. No. He was killed because he said, I must increase. That's not what he said. It's not what John said. You get these these preachers and churches there. Oh, we gotta get the big numbers. No. He said, I must decrease. He ends up in jail when Jesus starts preaching. Jesus comes down off the mount of, of, of being tempted by Satan. He hears that John's in Baptist, so he goes back to his hometown and he begins his ministry. While John is in jail. John, I must decrease. He must increase. What happens to him? He dies. Why? Because the nation rejected him. And when we get to chapter uh, 4, we're going to see that from the first time that Jesus preaches from his hometown, they have already rejected him. John's death shows you already Israel was not going to receive him as their Messiah. Because he would have been Elijah somehow, some way. I can't explain that because it didn't happen. He says in verse 76 that we read. He says, For thou shalt be, he says, And thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest. Go back to chapter 1 verse 13. Let's see what Gabriel has to say. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. You know where we are right now in chapter 1, verse 76? Everyone's rejoicing at the birth that they had the little layman. What do you call his name John for? Don't call his name John. Call him Zacharias after his father. They're, they're, they're upset. After Elizabeth gives birth, there's joy. Here's this old lady. She has, she's had a baby. Wow. Here's the father now speaking. Whoa. Whoa. He prophesies. There's joy. For he shall be great. This is this is Gabriel telling Zacharias about John. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. You know what? I'm not great in the sight of the Lord. When God looks at me, he sees a sinner, saved by the grace of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God sees me, you know what he sees? He sees somebody who does wrong all the time. I'm sorry to say that, but it's the truth. When God looks down at me, he says, man, look at him griping. Look at him complaining. He knows he's not supposed to do that. Look at that thought he just had. Look at the anger. Just because it's a red light. Look at his. I'm not great in the sight of the Lord. I can't say that. But Gabriel says about this boy before he's even born, before he's even a man, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. You know, my testimony is I, I used to drink, and even after I was saved for a while, I drank. Nineteen ninety, I gave up drinking finally, and then I had to drop since. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what? I got the Holy Spirit indwelling in me. It's in my heart. And will never leave me. And never forsake me. Even from his mother's womb. 
And many of the children of Israel shall he, John, turn to the Lord their God. He shall go before him, God, in the spirit and power of Elias, Elijah. Now watch. <coughs> Excuse me. To turn the, the, the hearts of the fathers to the children and to the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared there's a preparer for the Lord and thou child a prophet of God given by God he says John's will of God is my son is coming prepare get ready get them ready now this is no ordinary child he's pre-named like Jesus Isaac Ishmael pre-commissioned like Jesus John the Baptist and Jesus before their birth has a job to do that God prescribed before they were even born Cyrus also long before he's even born prophet walks up to one of the kings and he says he's going this is the sign Cyrus, my servant, will be born, and he's going to help the people of Israel. So the prophets open up the Bible and say, Cyrus, here, here's, look at, there's your name. And there's what you were supposed to do, which you did. Now, another lesson here in 76, the teacher about English. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. That is an extraordinary call for one man, and he is faithful. And he does what he's supposed to do. It's wonderful. To give knowledge. To give knowledge. Who? John. To give knowledge of salvation. So what do they do? They walk up different classes. John, what do we need to do? And he tells them. And we'll get into that. What must I do to be, be to get right with God? And he tells them. So he just didn't dunk people so that, and his magic number board shows up 500 today. No. He baptized them, preparing the people for Jesus, and showed them the knowledge of how to be saved. He just didn't put them in the water. I guarantee you, John the Baptist, when he baptized, he made sure that, listen, he, he, he had the scribes and the Pharisees, he said, yo, vipers, who has told you? He wasn't just going to put them in the water and say, look at the board, we got a thousand. Couple more, we get a brand new baptistry. Few more than that, we get a building program. We get the big thumb thermometer with how much money we got. That's not John. John would have never been into easy believism. He would not been into carnival rides. Ride the camels to the Jordan. Get off and you're underwater. Pop 
a balloon and get a, uh, what would Jesus do? Bracelet, you know Jesus wasn't ready for the ministry yet. Thou uh, to give knowledge of salvation unto all people of the world. Wrong. His people. Who's his people? Jews. No Gentiles are. There's a Gentile that comes up to Jesus and calls her a dead dog. Get away from me. Even the disciples have had it. Get her out of here. He helps her, grace and mercy, but he came for the Jews. So when you do your Matthew gospel study in the church, you got to realize it's all Jewish. Only at the end of Matthew is Jesus died, buried, and arose from a grave. Now you get the next book, Acts. It takes a little while before the, before the Gentiles get in. Acts chapter 8. Then Acts chapter 9. Then Acts chapter 10. Then the Gentiles start getting in. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's not written for Gentiles. Now, you, you can get lessons out of it. You can get spiritual lessons out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, John's written later, written for those who are saved. Matthew, Luke, and John. I mean, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You can get, we're studying Luke. We can get insight. But there are some things in here that you guys say, you know what? That's not church. Sorry. And we'll come across those things. And I will tell you, that's not church. It's not me. Unto his people by the remission of their sins. Now, that is the entire ministry of John. No. No doodads. His ministry is the knowledge of how to be saved and to prepare for Jesus Christ. So when Jesus comes, and this doesn't happen, when Jesus comes, John, how are you doing? They're ready for you. And they weren't. <laughs> but John didn't fail. They failed. All those that rejected Jesus in his time, God will call John the Baptist as a witness. Oh, really? You want to find something wrong with John? Go ahead. Point something out with John. I know he's a sinner. He didn't drink. He did everything he was supposed to do. What about you guys? Even the Sadducees, the scribes, all that came to him. The knowledge is to know what it is. And that was from John. There is knowledge, there is wisdom, and there is understanding. Knowledge is to know. Okay? I know what a hammer is. I can go to the store and, and, and a complete uh, home furnished store. Home appliances, home everything. I can walk into a home, I can look around, and I can all the stuff for the house, I can go, that's a hammer. Yep. That's not a hammer. That's not a hammer. That's not a hammer. That's a hammer. I know that. Okay? John goes to the nation and says, you got to know Jesus. You got to know the Messiah. And you got to know your sin." Would be the law. He's under the law. Yeah, we know the law. Thou shalt not. Okay. Wisdom is the how to use what you know. 
From John is the knowledge. From the people is the wisdom. All right. I bought the hammer. I take it home. I put a nail up to a board and I start. Dang, 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 dang. I know it's a hammer and I know how to use it for. I know how to use it. I don't go around hitting people in the head. That's wrong. I know it's a hammer, but hitting people in the head is wrong. That's not what it was made for. I don't bring the hammer home. I know it's a hammer. I don't put it in the, in the fish tank. That's, that's, that's not how to use it. So the people have got to take what John is showing them, and they've got to use what John is showing them. All right, this is the law. This is the salvation. All right, law says, thou shalt not commit adultery. All right, wisdom of the people. That's someone else's wife. You need to leave her alone. Thou shalt not steal. Okay, thou shalt not steal. What, okay, what do I do with that? That is someone's property. I am not to take it. See, I know what stealing is. Now, my wisdom is not to do it. So what do I need to know? I need to repent. He says, repent. What is repenting, John? John is getting yourself right. Making a turn in your life. To do that which is right. Okay, people. I gotta forsake some things. I gotta get my life right and get my myself right with God. So John is showing them knowledge that people ought to have the wisdom. Understanding is your relationship to God. I got a hammer. I know you take a hammer and a nail and you, you nail. How can I use that for God? Church, they got some. They want to have some building done. And I go there. I take my hammer. I take my nails. I, I drive in nails to build whatever the church needs to build, or maybe a saint in the Lord that can't do the job. And I go over there and I take a hammer and nail and build something for them. That's using it for God. Now. Some people take a hammer and a nail and they just make it just for an occupation, for their own good. That's not for God. Unless you make it for an occupation, you make money and you give God tithes and offerings and missionaries, okay? Then that's the understanding for God. Understanding in the Bible is what you do, how you do, what you know for God. Now, let's go to Job chapter 28, 28. Look at some things here and we'll a couple of verses and we'll close. Job twenty-eight twenty-eight. This is a very important verse to know. You don't need to know it, but you should and I don't. But you should know twenty-eight twenty-eight Job. It'd be easier with like twenty twenty and you know your vision, but twenty-eight twenty-eight Job. And unto man he God said. Behold the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. The people are to fear God by what John is telling them. And some do. Some don't. To depart from evil is understanding. So in order to walk away from what John is telling them, in their wisdom, their understanding would be they turn away from, from after being baptized in, from, by John, they live a different life that's pleasing to God. So, so John tells them what to do. They, those who get right, do what they're supposed to do. And they do it for God. Some do that. Nicodemus, I believe, did that. We know the apostles did that because being baptized of John is one of the one of the, the um, requisites, one of the qualifications to be an apostle. You learn in the book of Acts. Paul had to be baptized of John to be an apostle. And he backslid. 
Jumped him. Psalms 111, verse 10. I would assume that John would turn some people away. Oh, that'd be mean. Psalms 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord. Oh, see that again? It is the beginning of wisdom. So what John is teaching them, the people are starting to fear. Uh-oh. The Messiah is coming. God is coming. He better not catch me with that booze. He better not catch me with that cigarette. He better not catch me with that woman. He better not catch me stealing at the job. He better not catch me sinning. You better watch out. You better not help. I'm telling you why. The Messiah is coming to town. He knows when you... Santa stole that song from Jesus. Wasn't one of the first things part of his ministry? Nathan L. Nathan L. When I saw thee under the tree, I see you when you're sleeping. I see you when you're awake. That's Jesus. So John is preparing the people to fear God. What is fear going to do? It's going to grow in wisdom on God. On Jesus and is going to get them to repent and do right what do what does a preacher need to do out of the pulpit he needs to have the people fear the Lord and that's not happening all right the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom you want wisdom fear God read the fear of the Lord in all the places in the book of Proverbs and the references thereof good Understanding have all they that do his commandments. John, what do I need to do? You need to obey the law. Not the church. All the Jews that come to John, what do we need to do? You need to obey that law. So if John is showing them knowledge, you know what John got to be doing? He's got to be teaching them what the law. Why would John do that? Now here we go. Ready? Ready? Drum roll, please. What tribe was John of? What was his father? His father was a priest. He's a Levite. Who was in charge of teaching the people the scripture? John the Baptist. John's a priest. His father is in the holy place. John would be next, you know, it says, it says something about the thought, and it came when his lot would be to burn the incense. John the Baptist would, if he would continue as far as the ministry of the, of the temple, he would have a lot to do something like his father, in the course of whatever, whatever. But John's lot as a Levite is he's teaching the people the law. Preparing them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now didn't Jesus say the law was unto unto was it the prophets unto John? John has to teach him what their conduct has to be before Jesus shows up. The understanding, having all, um, man, my, forgive me, my eyes are going cloudy. They that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. Proverbs 1 7. Proverbs 1 7. Now, the key, what is John doing? He's teaching them to fear God. You know, those who do not obey John do not get right and end up in hell during Jesus' time. Why? Because they did not fear God. 1 7, I said. The fear of the Lord, there it is again, is the beginning of knowledge. Didn't we see knowledge? Fear the Lord. Didn't we see? Fear the Lord is wisdom. Didn't we see? Fear the Lord is understanding. That is the ministry of John. And, but fools despise 
wisdom, and instruction. All those that did not do what John told them to do were fools. Herod was a fool. 9.10. Proverbs 9.10. We're starting to see now what John... John is not baptizing. Hey, hey, okay, I know our book next. He's teaching them. He's conditioning them for the Messiah. And there are people in the gospel read. They feared Jesus. Proverbs 9, verse number 10. The fear of the Lord, there it is again, is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge, all right, remember John, of the holy is understanding. That's the ministry of John the Baptist. Knowledge, he that that's what John's job is. Wisdom is the reaction from the people. Understanding is their bring forth bring forth fruit of repentance, he says to them. That's the understanding. Show me you're really right. Did he baptize him? He said, No, I want to see your fruits first. Before I put you in water, I better see your fruits. And I've been in a church. Well, you baptized me a couple of years ago. We need to end the service right now. We need to talk. You're going to make me look bad in front of people. Tough cookies. John, did, he stopped them. And he had a little talk with them. And he wanted to make sure they had the knowledge that they needed. And he wanted to make sure that he had the, they had the fear of God. Fifteen thirty-three, Proverbs fifteen thirty-three. Pages, yeah. Proverbs fifteen thirty-three. The fear of the Lord. Is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. John was humble. Jesus comes walking up to him. John's like, uh, uh, You need to baptize me. No, 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 no. You baptize me, John. They're doing it. They're doing it to show that they're right, trying to get right with God. I'm right with God. I am holy. You baptize me. It's the fear of God. Isaiah 11, 2. Isaiah 11, 2. One more verse. Isaiah eleven two. No more verse after this. And the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, shall rest upon him, Jesus, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. You find that in John. You find that in the Lord Jesus Christ. You were you were supposed to find that in the nation of Israel, but they they weren't. And Isaiah thirty three six. And we'll go back to Luke and we'll close. Isaiah thirty three six. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation 
Remember, to show them the knowledge of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So back to Luke. One. Verse 76. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. He's a prophet. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, preparing the people to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remissions of sin, of their sins. Why are they, why, are, why is it their sins? Because they fear God and they don't want to be caught with it. You know, we're not the sin because one of these days the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come and call us home. I would hate to be taking a mouthful of booze when the rapture happens. I would definitely hate to be in the wrong bed. You imagine having having your your your, your husband be at the grocery store or something like that, and the rapture happens. You, you know, he catches his wife in a, in a bed in his bed that someone else is not supposed to be there. I hate to be taking a drag off a. <coughs> Cigarette or marijuana when the Lord calls home. I would hate to be taking extra breaks at work when the Lord calls us home. I would hate to be lying. I would hate to be signing a paper that says I'm going to pay a debt that I couldn't pay. I sure would hate to be caught by the Lord Jesus Christ at the rapture by having a carnal church and carnal activities. And that's what John's preparing the nation right now. I would hate to see the nation be caught off guard. Had he, if the nation would be caught off guard, John and James said, Lord, will you call down fire and destroy this place? And some got right. Not all. And some of them can chase their roots back to the ministry of John. Long after John dies. Paul died a long time ago. Peter died a long time ago. James died a long time ago. The eleven apostles of the Lamb. Not Judas scary, he's gone. He's out, he's in hell. The eleven apostles of the Lamb died a long time ago. But you know, you and me, and anybody hearing this this thing, you know you can trace your salvation back to one of the eleven apostles of the Lamb. They're dead, but their ministry hasn't ended. And their ministry could have been from John the Baptist, too. And he's been dead before them. You work the person that, that witnessed to you, the person that witnessed to that person, the person witnessed to that person, the person that witnessed to that person, and, and all the way down. You can trace it to the, to the one of the eleven apostles of the Lamb. I don't know who the twelve is, you know, Paul or Manasseh, whatever. We maybe Paul. I'll include Paul in that list. Thirteen with Manasseh. Thirteen apostles in the land. And there were other apostles, but the basic foundation. You can trace your salvation back to them, and their ministry. You know, they've been dead in the grave a long time ago. And they're still getting fruits. They will still earn crowns or still earning crowns when people get saved if that line goes back. You know, you can start a ministry today and die and still get the fruits. You can raise children right in the Lord and you die and they, they live on and, and they try to do what you taught them and their your grandchildren and then try to teach. And, and listen, evolution, is, I mean, things get worse. But what you bound in your child as a ministry and to their children and to their great-grandchildren, 
will be accounted to you. You know why churches are in danger today? Because they sidestepped and took worldly means, and that worldly means flourished, and worldly means flourished, and the world and in this grew and moved grew and more. Nicodemus came to Jesus one night. Joseph of Aramea came, well, he didn't come to Jesus. He gave Jesus his empty tomb. Would you think that those gentlemen had something to do with John the Baptist and his ministry? The chief priests rejected Jesus Christ. The scribes and Pharisees and all that came to John. They had to reject the Messiah by John's ministry. They're without excuse. When I go tell someone how to be saved and that they're going to hell unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, and I show them from the Bible and I teach them from the Bible, and they stand before God and say, I never knew. They don't have an excuse no more. I explain to them. There are people I have been involved in the street ministry and personal work that they are not without, they have no excuse before God because I taught them how to be saved, just like John did. And there have been maybe people who got saved who are teaching other people how to get saved because of what I taught them and not even knowing. Goes a long way. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. That's exactly what John is doing. His gospel is the law, uh, the law and prepare for the Messiah. 